Here's a figure from the book again, 723, that explains the flashlight experiment that I just performed for you. When a beam of sunlight is falling directly on the, on the surface of the Earth, in other words, when the sun is directly overhead, that beam of light is very concentrated. Okay, that's same amount of sun, very concentrated beam of light when the sun is directly overhead. And we know that the sun's mostly always overhead at the tropics. If the sun is low in the sky or Earth is tilted away, so if we have very low sun angles or it, when Earth, the northern hemisphere, is tilted away, then that same beam of sun is now spread over a greater area. And you can see that this circle is much wider than this circle, wide circle, tight circle. Again, try it at home to convince yourself. And it's that beam spreading that we now have energy spread over a greater area that means we're not heating up as intensely when we have that beam in a smaller area. So the tropics get heated up because the amount of energy per surface area of Earth is greater than the amount of energy per surface area of Earth when in higher latitudes or when the sun is lower in the sky. Okay, so think about that. Direct heating, indirect heating, more heat, less heat, tropics heat up, the poles don't heat up. In fact, at the winter solstice, anywhere above the Arctic Circle gets plunged into six months of darkness. And the opposite is true for during our summer, Antarctica is completely dark for six months because the tilt of the Earth prevents any sunlight from reaching this region at the respective solstices. All right. We also want to think about the angle of the sun relative to the horizon. So again, if you start to think about your own experiences, have you ever been driving down the road and then suddenly the sun was just like right in your eyes? You've driven down this road, you know, all the time, and there's just that one or two days a year when you're driving home or driving to school and the sun is directly in line with the road that you're driving on. Well, that's because the sun changes its aspect in the sky depending on the season. As summer's coming on, the sun is rising higher in the sky relative to us looking here on Earth. As winter's coming on, in this time of year, the sun is going lower in the sky. So sun angle is also changing over the seasonal cycle. Higher sun angles associated with our spring and summer, lower sun angles associated with fall and winter. It's that sun angle where the sun rises and where it uh, that determines where the sun rises and where the sun sets. And in fact, the sun may scribe a longer path across the sky in the summer and a shorter path across the sky because now it's lower in the sky. And the net result of that sun angle, the high sun angles or low sun angles, are changes in day length. And it shouldn't be too hard to think about what do we find in summer relative in, to winter in terms of day length. We have long days in summer so and short days in winter. So not only is the sunlight more concentrated during summertime, but we also have sunlight that's lasting a longer time because the days are longer as we go from winter to summer. So kind of keep this in mind. Higher sun angles longer days, more concentrated sunlight during the summer season, lower sun angles, less concentrated light, shorter days during the winter season. And if you think about the kinds of things that depend on the sun, like heating of the surface of the earth or photosynthesis, phytoplankton productivity, plant productivity, the longer days, the higher sun angles, the more intense sunlight are going to be more conducive for higher productivity or higher heating. 
lower sun angles, shorter days, less intense radiation per unit area are going to keep our Earth cool and they aren't going to be as effective for photosynthesis. Okay, so that's where we're going with this seasonal cycle. So make sure you understand it, study that figure, study this slide, and make sure you understand the kinds of changes that happen in sun angle and day length and solar intensity through the seasonal cycle. Because it will be very important to us when we talk about uh, productivity in the ocean especially. All right. We also want to kind of keep in mind that the seasonal variations in sunlight, as I've already implied, are going to be different for different latitudes. And we define what are called uh, three climate regions. The tropics, between 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south. That's the band of Earth that's heated most often because that's where the sun is found most often. The temperate zone where we live, 22 and a half degrees north to 66 and a half degrees north or 22 and a half degrees south to 66 and a half degrees south. Those are the temperate regions. And then the polar Arctic regions, which are above or below, if you want to put it that way, 66 and a half degrees north and 66 and a half degrees south, with actually, which actually experience one day a year. Okay? Six hours of darkness, six hours of light, six hours of darkness, six hours of light as well. So I don't think you need to beat those too hard because I think you're familiar with that, but it is going to be important for you as well to think about how seasonal variations change as a function of latitude, how far away we are from the equator, and particularly with regard to temperate latitudes and tropical latitudes and also polar latitudes.